In the course of the project, which requires us to evaluate every last inch of the Titanic, using the very few resources available, some of which we've uncovered, we inevitably find some spaces that some people expected to be one way, but in reality have turned out to be entirely different. I mentioned in a previous video that we, specifically Matt here, had uncovered one of these places on the ship, and wanted to share it with you guys at some point. Now, if you were just casually interested in the Titanic, like most people, this might not seem like that big of a deal to you. It's not like we found out that the Grand Staircase is different than what everyone perceives it to be. This is slightly smaller. However, if you were genuinely interested in the Titanic, like we are, you will find it to be exciting. And we did when we discovered it. Yeah, we find it pretty exciting. I mean, it was discovered by accident, actually. We were working on the dining room and the reception room bulkhead. That was the bulkhead right between the two rooms. And there are arches in the room, the windows, and they weren't fitting exactly in the models. So what we were looking at were the Olympic photographs of the space and the plants. And it just wasn't lining up correctly. So what we decided instead was to look at the only known photograph of the Titanic's dining room. We have a good version of this photograph thanks to our consultant, Kem Rachel, who was gracious enough to send us many, many Titanic photographs. Now, this photograph of the Titanic's dining room was taken on the morning of April 11th by Francis Brown, who was a passenger. He's pr a pretty famous, well-known passenger who took many photographs of the Titanic before leaving in Queenstown. Now, the photograph in question actually shows the bulkhead, but it's in the background, and there's passengers in the way. The background of the photograph is washed out by the lights coming through the windows, so the bulkhead isn't that visible. Looking at it right away, there was something up. The way it was always expected to be is identical to what the Olympic had. It was a series of five arches, four identical ones, two on either side, and one in the middle which was larger. I was looking for one pilaster in a beam, an overhead beam that runs the length of the ship, and right at that beam is where there should be a pilaster, and then an arch, and then another pilaster. Now the pilaster was there, and there should have been one of the arch windows right next to it, but instead there was a large open space to the right of the pilaster. And you could see right through that open space, right into the, what looked like right the reception, the reception room. room. So there was a lack of what should have been there. So mm -hmm. something was different from Olympic. I took the photo, scanned it, and put it into paint to try to trace out what I thought I was seeing and sent it to the other members of the team to get their opinions on. That there seemed to be an open space around the area where there should have been like two windows. There was just one gigantic arch. And which was even more curious was there was like a keystone in the middle of the arch, mm -hmm. which meant that this was the center of the arch, where there were two. So if there were two here, there was another, win another window here. So the next step was to create concepts of this. I made one in SketchUp, Kyle made one in Photoshop, and we sent it to our consultants to get their opinions on it. We sent it to Bill Sauter. We sent it to Ken Marshall. People had sort of passively understood that it was essentially the same as it was on Olympic. Uh, just an arched gallery. Careful examination of the only known photographs of the first class dining room on Titanic shows that uh, White Star was not satisfied with the original configuration and the windows had been substantially enlarged. After getting their approval of the new design, we implemented it into the game. We designed it properly and put it into the game engine and that's what we're going to have now. So, on either side of the boiler casing in this bulkhead, we have the doors between the reception room and dining room. The same doors that were on Olympic were also on Titanic, but the arches are what's different. They have keystones on either side. The design on the reception room side, we believe, still matches the design that would be seen on Olympic. Certain elements are repeated. Some of the Jacobean decor is still around these arches because arches are similar to other arches around the room and the side for the dining room is similar to the other photographs of Olympic. Not much has changed with sides, just the openings. The only people studying this are all people who weren't there, mm -hmm. um, who who never walked the ship. The closest any of us have ever come is, is diving there and looking at footage. Mm -hmm. Uh, and without any other documentation of this wall, there's no plans that exist of it, there's no other photographs apart from this one that has it in the far background. There's really no way to actually uncover this, except just by the sheer dumb luck that we had. No one should hold it against anyone for depicting it, how it was originally accepted to be, based off the Olympic. 
There were a lot of differences between the Titanic and the Olympic. Because when the Olympic had its maiden voyage, there were some passenger complaints. Mm -hmm. uh, the designer took the voyage and, and evaluated different things that should be changed, and things like that. So a lot of those changes have some sort of justification behind it. Uh, the enclosement of the ADEC promenade partways, the additional cabins being put in, the Café Parisienne being inserted, um, everything kind of has a reason behind it. And I think if we're going to put this forward and say that this bulkhead is the Titanic's design, which I, I feel confident enough to say this is what that bulkhead on the Titanic was, we still need to be able to at least put forward some hypotheses about why they changed it. And I was talking this over with Bill Souter, and, and he and I think that it's quite possible that they opened it up for additional light to come through, a, a better circulation of light. Mm -hmm. um, and also, if you're in one of the two rooms, either the reception room looking into the saloon, or the saloon looking back into the reception room, it just seems bigger, mm -hmm. because you barely even notice that bulkhead's there. You just seem to be able to see right through, and it looks like one giant room, which is almost, what, a third the length of the ship when you put the two together? Mm -hmm. Maybe a quarter? But still, that's huge, that's significant, it's like 200 feet. Yeah, and almost from a modern design point today, it just feels a lot more modern, mm -hmm. you know? Instead of the, the round arches, it, they've all seemed to fit the, the design of the, of the style of the period, yet that, open, that openness, everything today is more open, mm -hmm. and it just seems like they realized on Olympic that eventually that Titanic should have this more open feel for the two spaces. That's right. That's right. It's kind of funny that here they are on D-Deck making it more open mm -hmm. while they're actually enclosing other areas on right. the ship, so it was really more like fine-tuning that balance <laughs> with the Titanic. Like I said earlier, I do feel confident enough to say that this is the design mm -hmm. of Titanics. Now, some people might debate that with us, however... Well, they can look at the photograph, too. Yeah, the, the photograph's out there. People can yes. certainly look at it. And the photograph's been out there for years. It, it can be just looked at anywhere. Yeah, and they can, they can look at that. I believe the evidence is right there. Uh, they might have some other ideas, but, you know, I'd love to hear them. Mm -hmm. However, I, I feel confident enough to say that this is how it's going to be included in the game.